in this next segment, I'm going to demonstrate uh, persistent volumes. So uh, a big thing with containers is, oh, you know, microservices and everything is stateless, but not everything is stateless. Some things like databases, for example, do need persistent storage or, or uh, even Docker registries, if you want to run those in your cluster. Um, you, you don't want when that pod dies for your entire registry to go away, your entire database to go away. So Kubernetes has um, a number of resources um, for allocating and claiming um, persistent storage on the cluster. And those are persistent volumes and persistent volume claims. So that's what I'm going to be showing next. So this is how you create a persistent volume. There's a separation between uh, creating the volume itself and then using that volume, which is called claiming the volume. Um, and that is to basically separate the concerns that a, a persistent volume is going to be created by a storage or cluster admin. Um, these are resources that can be consumed by claims. Claims are things that a developer, for example, would issue. And that is, I want storage. I don't care if it's NFS or iSCSI or, or what it is on the back end. I just need 10 gigabytes of persistent storage. Just, you know, just give it to me. And that is a claim. Um, and the claim will go out and try to find a persistent volume created by the cluster of storage admin that satisfies the claim. And then the developer can use that claim name in a pod spec to buy, to, to mount that persistent storage into a container. So here we're looking at, uh, that's an overview. You'll see all that coming up. So this is, uh, again, what a cluster of storage admin would do. You can create, uh, I'm creating a persistent volume here. It's NFS backed. Uh, this is the path on the NFS server. This is the server uh, name. Uh, I'm gonna say it's five gigabytes large. And this right here, uh, this is something that you can do for NFS. That is, if the, if the persistent volume claim is deleted, um, and basically this persistent volume becomes unbound, Recycle will spin, spin up a pod that deletes everything in the NFS share so that when it gets rebound, it doesn't have your, the persistent volume, the, the persistent data from some other uh, previous uh, claim. So now we've made a persistent volume, capacity five gigabytes. Um, so now we're going to create a persistent volume claim. This is the, something that a developer would do. And you can see here that, that you know, there's no NFS, there's no storage specific stuff in this spec. It is just, I need persistent storage with this access mode and this size. So when you create that, vol that volume claim, the persistent volume claim controller goes and tries to find a volume that can satisfy the claim. And it has, it's bound the persistent volume claim demo to the volume demo. I mean, if we're using demo here, it makes it confusing. I know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm starting up a pod. Um, this is much like the basic pod that I've done in previous segments, but you can see that this is a new segment inside the container uh, specification. You have a volume mount, you tell it where to mount it, and the name of the volume. And this name matches up with a volume instance further in the spec. So it's outside the containers um, because the containers can share volumes if there's multiple containers in a pod. So we have volume, we, have, we name it demo, this name and this name have to match. And the type of the volume is a per persistent volume claim and the claim name is demo, which matches our claim that we created up here. So now we've got that pod running. Let's just echo some data into a file that is inside the mount point for that persistent volume. And if we check this data, there we go. So, you know, what you'd like to see is if you delete the pod and then recreate it, that data is still there. So we'll see if that's the case. So we're recreating the pod and it's up and running. And if we check the data, there it is. So we, we killed the pod, we brought it back, the persistent data is still there. And that's because the while the pod goes away, the persistent volume claim does not. And so the pod can reuse the claim just, so, just as long as the claim is bound to a persistent volume. 